technology is fear. There's no beating about the bush. As many of our previous lectures have talked about, we've uh, evolved from a simpler, happier state uh, into one where we are constantly at risk, where we are threatened by ourselves, by each other, by the objects that we have in our pockets and in the homes around us. Fear the world, for it is full of things. Let's look at some of those things in a little bit more detail, because technology is everything that you use, everything from the toothpick that you use to jam between your teeth, to remove the bits of rancid meat that you've ripped off a bear, to the computer that you're staring into now, which is a much more complicated piece of technology than a toothpick, but it's still, in essence, exactly the same. It is a part of the world that we leverage to change another part of the world, be it in a small or a massive way. This is a machine. I'm sure you've seen one of these before. Machines are dangerous. I don't know if you've ever been hit by a car, but that's a machine. And if you're hit by one of these things, well, there won't be much of you left. What you're looking at here is a machine that had an originally a natural purpose to help people and change the world. This is a food rending machine, which would strip food down into smaller pieces of food to enable you to chew it. The basic essence, like the toothpick, of making things small enough to fit inside you. Instead, repurposed into a lorry. Now, a lorry that looks like this, driving down the road towards you, should incite fear in your very heart. You get a car stuck in the front of that thing, it's going to suck it all inside, people too, and fling them spread out the back like a kind of metallic confetti and blood cloud. Not good, not good. You should be afraid of these things. But people build these things in earnest because we believe that we can change the world for the better by making things like this, by using the tools that we find around us. By tools, I mean bits of wood, mud, and ore. <clears throat> This is a great example of what happens with technology. It turns you into a soldier. War used to be fun. War used to be getting a glass bottle and kicking it down the road into the next village. That was fine. Okay, you get the odd little cut, but it wasn't too bad. No, no. Get mankind and technology. We started off small, as you can see from our chart. This is, this is an, an estimate of the amount of damage done by different things in the world. So we begin with small things, which is fists. Fists are small. Snowballs. Gentle things, but still a way of technologizing frozen water around you and turning it into a weapon. Once we got to bows and arrows, then to spears, then to swords, uh, to catapults and mangonels, we swiftly advanced into hand grenades, landmines, tanks, and nuclear weapons, which is what we see at the MLE peak up here, which is massive life ending. And that's pretty much what we've seen throughout the 20th century. We estimate, though, that we're going to get tired of technology because it is too dangerous, and we're going to slide down to a non-massively lethal uh, time in the future. It's going to take us a little while to get there, but I believe that together we can put people like this little man with a silly hat out of business. This is one way that you can cleanse your world of technology. Chuck it in a fucking fire. Fire will kill almost everything. If it kills a living thing, it'll kill a dead thing too. What you're seeing here is what happens when you take an MP3 player and chuck it into a barbecue. It's not pretty, and you will hear it cry. Well, the cries that you're hearing are all those sad little pre-recorded songs dying, twisting and fading away. And you might think you're going to miss those little songs, but those songs are ways of keeping you trapped in an artificial world made of metal, plastic and weird wire things that might not even be made of metal or plastic anymore. Because technology is so advanced into metamaterials now, nanotech, who knows what that is? It could be made of, I don't know, maybe a piece of grass repurposed into an eye stabbing device. This is the world that we live in now. Burn it all. I know this is going to be a little bit radical for a lot of people because, you know, we're used to the toys that we have around us. But there's a simpler world out there. Why not just go outside and lick a tree like our ancestors used to? Find a frog. Chase it through the woods. This is obviously a chart. Um, I don't want to patronize you because you've probably seen this chart before. This chart uh, describes how different kinds of people interact with technology and how it changes them. Now, you'll see that in these groupings, we all start off tempted by technology. Tem technology is innately appealing. It's like, I'm lazy. Can someone do this for me easier? Yes. Great. I will use that. A machine is just another human being turned into a lump of plastic that's been spat out by a machine. That's all it is. And we like these things initially. We like toothbrushes because they're easier than jamming bits of mud in between your teeth and getting it to pull it back out with stuff. No one likes that. Toothbrush is good. But soon, as you'll see as you go across the chart, 
those toothbrushes, those saucepans, those bicycles, cars, satellite dishes, lovely cushions, acrylic and nylon, all focus into one long death running line, which ends us with nuclear devastation, androids that want to hunt you down and murder you, and it's the end of all life and all civilization. And it's a cycle, like all things are cycles. We'll get through this eventually. You know, we'll chuck in our e-box and per cry, which is like every every time that you encounter technology, you cry a little bit inside. Every time that happens, uh, you have another cry. Uh, and per every half cry that you've got, um, you get that, you throw that back into the clock and pass. Now, clock and pass is a technical way uh, of describing what happens when your brain resets having looked at a thing for too long. You can't take these things in. So every time you reset, you swiftly move on to the Bumal one. Now, Bumal one is a little bit like the uh, banal state uh, of staring at a sky. Nothing very exciting is happening, but it's there, and you can kind of engage with that. But Bumal is what technology does to you. If you look at it, you go, and you're gone. Your brain is just being liquefied all the time. Now, depending on how you go from that, you can e-box it to the left, you can e-box it to the right. If you go to the right, you get very angry, and that brings you right the way around to the bottom of the chart once more. Now, ah, my eyesight is a little poor. I should perhaps get my glasses on, except glasses are evil, and those bit of glasses in my eyes will eventually cut out my irises and remove my brain without me even knowing that it's happening. So I don't wear glasses, so I have to look real close to stuff. Yeah, I can't read that. But what this is showing you very clearly is that tools will hurt you. And that end of the cycle that we're in is about understanding that we need to replace the tools in the world with tools in our hands, of our hands. Our actual hands are themselves tools, the most powerful things in the world. You probably are so a little bit skeptical about this. So let me show you two simple things. On the left, a plastic thing. On the right, another plastic thing. But what are they for? This is the eternal horror of technology. We've created so many things, we don't even know what they do anymore. On the left, that could be a phone charger. It could be uh, the eviscerated husk of an espresso machine. It could be a pencil sharpener. It could be a thing for putting your hand in only to have it cut straight off at the wrist. You don't know. When you see a random machine on a bench, what do you do? Do you approach it going, oh, Maybe this is my friend. Maybe it'll help me. I'll shove my face inside it and see if it gets removed. No, don't do that. Stay away. Put it down. Find a hammer. Smash it. Look for the fire. Put it in the fire. Watch it burn. Watch it melt. Hear the screams of its plastic death. Know that you are safer and that you have probably saved someone else from this horrible fate. The thing on the right, imagine having that jabbed into your forehead. That's not going to be good. You don't need a, a <coughs> saucer of milk plug-in device to be shoved into your face. How's that going to help anyone? Someone thought it was a good idea, but it wasn't. Don't trust them. Burn it. I hope that I've instilled you with a sensible fear of technology that you'll be able to take away and use in your everyday lives and spread to those around you, particularly your loved ones, your family, and if you're unlucky enough to have them, your children. Thank you. I appreciate the time.